yeah. Tri tribulations I've been through. Jubilation is past due. I'm not so these cashews I squeeze and I make juice. Yeah, I break through. Examine my life, I get all lays. 2016 when a court's case. An atheist told me, God, they my success now is just for play. See, making something from nothing is something I will never take it for granted. Look, these bars and these six, I could turn to a book, the seed has been planted. Now, I was lost in the wind, turned the lust to a win. Now my eyes closed and I bear my soul when saying, Oh Lord, what the feeling? I be good. No stress, hands up to the ceiling. That be the mood. And it's time to have an interview with the God MC, Rapper 101, the one, the only M. Manifest is in the house. Woo, 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 <laughs> thank woo, you, thank woo. you. You're looking lovely. <laughs> I like the, the rings and the. Uh, Chelly, see, I'm learning from you, you guess. Everything that you yeah, have going, yeah. yeah green, we, that, it's 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 <laughs> the green too is a good color. What, what kind of green is? You know, men are usually color blind, so we don't. We're not specific with the colors. So what kind of green I is that? I honestly don't know what kind of. I so just you know it's, it's like money a man, green. yeah. It's money green. Money green. Yes, I like that. that. That's what we're looking for. Double entendre <laughs> with me sitting in front I of know, you. I like it. <laughs> Welcome, Manifest. Um, Thank you. Firstly, as soon as I put out that you're even coming, the way the Manning fans have been out in full force. Big up to them. Just, you know, try to put out their questions, uh, try to find out when the gamble is dropping, when the new songs are coming. There's a whole lot that people want to know from you. But mm -hmm. let's start from the year 2019. Yeah. Describe your year to me. I started my year... In December of 2018, <laughs> a month early, and I think after we did manifestivities last year, it really went well, yeah. and um, it gave it gave us vim and legs to be like you know our next move has to be our best move. Mm -hmm. um, I spent a lot of time in January recording, um, and so I had a lot of things ready, um, doing some of these collaborations that people are now hearing and yeah. all of that. Did some traveling, went to the UK, America. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's been interesting. We've had it for for a year in which I've been pacing myself to release an album. We have many interesting moments from going to doing the Tim Westwood thing. I did, you know, the If We Mamu Memorial yes, keynote. Yes. Uh Ravano and had his moment. Bernard dropped the song featuring me, the video. So, I mean, this year's had really some really, really, really high moments in mm -hmm. that regard in terms of significant ones. And now we're about to end it up with significant ones that we're orchestrating that we've been waiting to, which is putting out the gamble, doing my festivities December 22nd. So we're about to end in a grand style. And, and from here... This is the promise I'm going to make to you guys. And I know the fans, they are going to... You can do hashtag Alu because you will see me there. So, so Alu promises. <laughs> Is that we've been planning our schedule in such a way that when we begin releasing, we don't intend to have that kind of space in between releases okay. anymore. So rest assured, it wasn't for no reason. Uh, it was for good reason to make sure. You know, one of the things that I've, I've realized with the music business is that you have to reward your supporters and your fans for their loyalty. Absolutely. And one of those rewards is for things to get bigger. Okay. Because then they are not wasting their time. They could be doing anything. They could be chopping, watching. It could be, it could be, they could be arguing in the house of Coco I know, but, but instead they are putting some time to support you, because yeah, they appreciate what you give. But 
I mean, I think that diehards for me, I, I, I really respect that they, they are, they are as committed. It's almost like we've gone from. It's like we're a family. I'm not even the Busi opinion on the family, <laughs> <laughs> so I have to. I also have to be held accountable. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. So that's why one has moved the way we we have this year in the sense of yeah, making sure that everything is not the same or same. Yeah. Imagine I release tracks and they, they don't they don't do as well. The fans will feel like all oh, the support we are wasting it. So let's wait for the next one. That's uh, true. And so that's what we are doing. And I think it's, it's beginning to show. Uh, the fans are able to trend anything manifest related when they wake up in the morning and they want to. Sometimes I see M Dot's lyrics. Sometimes I see this and the third. And so I have to be able to reward that with amazing music, amazing visuals, and great results. I like that. I like that. Now, uh, manifestivities uh, last year. Describe how it was, the the whole turn up. Some of the amazing acts that climbed the stage. Yeah. I think some of them were not, were not even expected. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> and it was something else. So describe Look, creating your own headline concert like that. Well, well, first of all, it's what we, that was the idea, to turn it more into a festival where it doesn't surround, it's not centered around just me. Okay. So we are we were trying to last year we were trying consciously the year before we had tried but we weren't able to get things together in time. But we'd we'd been talking about it for a while. The manifestivity is something we want to turn into not a year end manifest concept, but kind of a musical festival curated by me. Mm. And last year was a leap of faith in that. Because it's not easy, AJ, to do these things. You people, you do December to remember. You know, it's not easy. I mean, whether it's financially, so we made certain leap of faith to you know to try and make it happen last year and and big up to i have to just be honest big up to my team i think last year was when i i didn't have to micromanage okay and that also goes to is a key thing to go to show that when different people are doing what they're supposed to and you're not always getting into the way or they're not also getting into your way you all figure it out everybody has to be responsible and they're not accountable so it's the team pulled through in a major way Hmm. Um, different, uh, you know, especially my manager, uh, and then everybody else. Like nobody was slacking. We don't have. We're not like twenty of us or anything of the sort. It, it, it's painstaking to make these things happen. And other people also come through that. Come through as like, as I like to say, adjunct faculty. Yeah. <laughs> Big up to Liza. What's up? I think she was helping us with press last year. Even though the, uh, some of the money fans say they see in the video she was jamming. <laughs> um, so, it, to answer your question, to go back to the initial thing, it felt great to be able to create that kind of experience in which people who were there went on to tell the world that this was a really good experience. Mm-hmm. This was a really great lineup. This had great surprises. Some of the things obviously you can't control. So, yes. coming through, etc. Some of these things, they're beautiful spontaneous moments partly because other people are also willing to come through so big up to him for that too promise came through if yeah i want to also big up if yeah in a major way because if yeah on a not so low key but since i came to ghana i think she's one of the artists that i'll say has consistently been supportive of me Wow. without being no hard things like no long things no you, one of the first, she was one of the first people I worked with, and then we put out that song, Asa. And uh, since then, she's always been. We, it's not like we are even close friends or whatever, but she always has a good rapport, and she, in random, randomly, we communicate, etc. But she was yeah. one of those people who held it down during my festivities last year. Like she brought a set, you know that that balance and energy. Sometimes when you have that sultry, sexy female energy, so yeah. her Simi. Ben, I came, shut down. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. I mean, it, 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 it was quite historic. I put, I've uploaded um, um, an, a, a recap on my YouTube channel. People can check it out. And, Brilliant. And uh, yeah, so so we, we're, we're thankful. And then we're just, we just work to try and make it bigger this year. And to, to build up on what happened last year and make it bigger. Will it be the same location? Same location. Okay. Uh, this year as well. But we'll try and... Uh, Spiff it okay. in different ways. I like that. I, I mean, if you if you look at it, to be honest, don't you see that even the fly this year is nicer than last year? True. So <laughs> we've already started well. <laughs> that shows you that we are playing games. Now, on the issue mm-hmm. of um, creating such an amazing concert or festival or, or, or an event such as that, mm-hmm. 
a lot of times people look at our corporate sponsorship of such um, events of in the creative arts as not entirely there. When you look at other countries such as Nigeria, which have a lot more corporate uh, organizations backing creative ideas, do you think there's a way to rectify this? Are we just not putting ourselves out there enough? Are corporate entities just afraid of making losses? How do you reconcile that? It's a business, so I don't think... It can- I think sometimes people can take leap of faith to support stuff in which they believe just for the quality of the experience mm. should exist. That is also part of business. Sometimes affiliating with things. I think I'm sure when you know Stambik does the jazz festival, it's not to make money, but it's it is for certain things to happen. Um, yes, you are right. It's, it, we haven't definitely reached a place where there is great synergy between businesses and the creative world in terms of support and i don't even want to look at it in terms of relationships because mm. you have to look at some of these things as relationships so i add this to we have to take accountability to, for some of this you always want give me give me once give me but as a business you have to be able to also articulate and convince certain people that this is this is the value proposition i'm offering here mm. and this is why you should take the leap of faith and on the other hand businesses and other entities products etc should also realize that sometimes it begins there from an idea that is solid that you understand. It is not always a how many bottles, how many things kind of thing. It, it, it is beyond that. You buy into an idea and you collaboratively try and get it to a place in which it's magnificent. Yeah. You know, so I, I also want to pick up those who do that, you know. They are actually, they are, they are entities and sometimes individuals who work within these. Uh, I want to, for manifest, I want to even shout out Chidi, um, that, that for my festivities last year. So we've been fortunate enough to meet people. I mean, this year, I mean, I met Nima Cho that helped, that 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 worked with us to play the Afrobeat Festival in New Jersey. You know, so there are people who really do understand what these collaborations can do, and okay. that, and and I think on top of it, they have to understand that sometimes it can it shouldn't be a one-off. So that if one thing, Charlie, this one, no, should have pop. At least we have ideas of three things we are doing in which you can gain benefits from other things. So. We have a ways to go, but both artists and businesses have to play their part in in not being greedy, but realize that we all fit it, and let's figure out a way to make these partnerships make everything we do grander. Now, let's talk about uh, some of the notable things you did uh, throughout the year, uh, namely the Ifumamu lecture. Now, describe that process to me. How was it like creating that keynote address, like writing down your thoughts in order to articulate it? the best way possible i remember in january 2018 i was either shooting Minewa or azuma nelson flu and i got a call from professor tijua uh, with this absurd suggestion that i should <laughs> <laughs> that they had met you know the academy etc and it had been proposed that you know me a mere manifest do their from a memorial keynote one of the impetus being that, you know, if Imamu did most of the significant things he did as a young man, mm-hmm. and it, it was high time that the academy recognized and embraced that current practitioners in the creative world who are young are uh, of, a, of a standard to be able to make contributions or to say things, um, not just to the academy, but to a wider audience. So. It, it was definitely daunting when I first heard it. Okay, you know, I mean, not because I don't think um, I'm, I can put in the work to try and put something like that together, but it that's exactly where it takes work, because I can't do everything, anything I do half-heartedly or one leg in. So I was just curious, not curious. I was a bit concerned initially that hey, will I be able to do that? Any kind of academic career I had was like ten, fifteen years ago. Yeah. But um, I think I embraced the initi- you know I had a conversation with my grandfather rest so that uh, and then you know we had some laughs about it you know he he did the first ever from my memorial keynote and I just got some film from that and uh, I also have some wonderful friends who I could always bounce ideas off while write certain things send it to them what do you think <laughs> etc so it was for me it was a very gratifying thing to be able to pull it off uh, I still have to fix part of it to publish the actual paper but as a keynote i was very happy with the fact that i was able to do it and the fact that um the academy was kind enough to open what they do to a younger person a younger practitioner who's also outside of academia more importantly 
well, we trying this one. But, <laughs> 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 but with your permission, let me also touch on um, the loss of your grandfather. Mm-hmm. Um, describe that moment in time for you and uh, time passed. Is it still as painful as it was then? I will assume it was. I mean, a loss is a loss. No matter how, if somebody is even one ten and you think you'll be prepared, you're never quite there. Yeah. But you know, he was uh, 97 though. So, in a sense, the, his absence is felt, but we celebrate how much he came to do and the, the full life that he lived. And I'm fortunate enough that I wasn't stupid to stay in America so long that I wouldn't have spent so many of his yeah. last years uh, uh, enjoying the wisdom of his presence and other things. So imagine, people are always asking me, why do you come back to Ghana? Now this alone, right now, in retrospect, is a, is a good reason. Yeah. Imagine, you know, to to have seen him in his 90s and maybe around 94, 95, right, he released a book. His last book was released around 94, 95. Um, so I'm very proud of the legacy that he has left. And so we celebrate that. The absence is very felt. You, you can go to the, the house and you feel it. It's, it's like an, a vacuum. There's an emptiness that wants to be filled. But we are fortunate that he lived long and full. Okay. Now, on the issue of returning to Ghana, and uh, I, with the year of return, allow me to pick your thoughts about this one. Now, Africa is a new hot thing. Like, the whole world... No, actually, Ghana is a new hot thing. Okay. <laughs> to Specifically, be specific. Ghana yeah. is a new hot thing. Like, everyone, the whole re- uh, year of return, uh, the whole idea of Africa and uh, the euphoria that is now creating across the world. Do you think that the hype that is now um circulating africa and and music and all that do you think you would put yourself are you putting yourself out there enough or are Ghanaian or african artists putting themselves out there enough one and also as someone who was that you consider relocating perhaps to now create music with everyone across the world because we see a lot of artists now deliberately moving to america to now get closer to who's doing that a few of the Nigerian yeah. artists have started actually moving to America, being placed mm-hmm. there to do bigger collaborations and putting their music out there even more. Mm-hmm. Is this something that you would consider doing? Not relocate, but I think what you're talking about is something that I've already begun practicing. Spending yeah. significant amounts, amounts of time, time in certain yeah. places because being present is very different. I mean, this year I spent significant... I mean, at the beginning of the year, first quarter, I spent like a month and a half in London. Mm. You know... And that was that added to the gamble completion. That's how some of these things come about. Mm. So that's important. I mean, it's difficult to do because taking time off is spending money and investing in what, but it's worth it. You know, ex- exposure to new ideas, to cutting edge, what is happening in different centers of music is very important. And then connecting. For me, I'm one of those artists that because I didn't come out the gate with this major monster hit everybody knew, it's been a gradual thing. Mm-hmm. So when I'm present in certain locations, that's when people are like, "Oh, manifest, I like your music, etc." They they might not, know, I might not even know, I have any idea that they even knew who I was. Um, so that one is 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 important, and as, depending on the stage of your career, you can make those decisions for yourself as to where. And how much time you want to spend in those places to have an effect. I tend to favor London currently. Mm. America, I still do go there. I think I've been to New York twice this year. Um, to also, you know, figure out a, a two, a one, a two, a three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that. Uh, are we doing enough to, what did you say? Are we doing enough to, to sort of... Uh, uh, align ourselves with the hype that's going on because we, we see that other countries are truly trying to put themselves out there are we as a country or are we as an industry doing enough well i think some of us are more worried so um, i sometimes worried so the excitement is doubt you know anytime anybody goes to ridiculous traffic in ghana Accra, mm. or when there's floods and there's a problem we're like even with these numbers look at what's happening do we yeah. have the capacity so yeah. That is, I think, some sometimes dull in it. But in terms of the marketing of Ghana, I think it's going wild and it's amazing. Have we taken advantage of it enough? We don't know. I mean, we, we have to do the best we can, both collectively and as individuals and what we want. 
but also you know that there, there's even constant debates about the year of return is it should well, how it is it is it going to be a stepping stone to something wider it can be just a year and all these and these are all parts of showing people are engaged me personally i want to see an evenness in what kind of networking or what kind of exchange between the diaspora and here that will be you know, we cannot have the mentality of Charlie Apayo, this one some opportunity to get things. And we, and also should not have the mentality of saviors are coming. And on the other side I hope the diaspora also has an open mentality not to be not to be very touristy in it. There's nothing wrong with it, but I think when there are deeper levels of engagement, more yeah. things can come out of it. Sure. Next thing you know, more business is more than and some of that is already happening to the credit of sort of these last couple of years and what the movement is in terms of individuals connecting and this is why some of this year of return stuff is happening some yeah. last year you've, you found self-organized groups of people coming as a group so they're always positive but we always have to critically look at things investigate how we are going about it and ask some of the questions you're asking are we doing enough to benefit from it hmm. you know and then if not what are, what should we do differently but we always have to, you always have to begin with the man in the mirror. These bigger than a person conversations, yeah, we can all have it and then everybody will, will be editorializing yep. about A, B, C, D. But it starts with what as an individual, you, whatever. I was on a BBC panel uh, not so long ago with Lydia Forsen, a few others, uh, in which th this was discussed and all of that and with the audience participating. And, um, and I think that already showed that there were deep divisions or disparities in how people looked at this or if people even cared for yeah them, you know if you let's say you take not the average but you take a regular Ghanaian, as in if you take 10 people 10 random people eight out of those 10 people how many out of those 10 people have bought into the whole year of return thing or do they think it's a foreign is something catered for a foreign audience. For, for really a foreign largely, audience. Yeah. So uh, there's work to be done, but it's being done. You know, I don't know it's the devil's playground. So once things are going on, you know, commend the good things, be able to critique, uh, criticize, uh, criticize constructively, and let's see how we can push for it. Now, with uh, critiquing or uh, even looking at the industry, do you think there's been enough policy direction in the right way? For, towards the creative art industry in general here in Ghana? No, definitely not. Mm. I think infrastructure-wise alone shows kind of a policy or a direction that would be favoring the creative arts a bit more. You know, whether it's spaces, the creation of spaces. You know, we, get to, we talk one district, one factory. Have we ever said one? creative performance <laughs> one performance space <laughs> one, you know because the quality of life of, of the people also is quite you know it's quite tied to the vibrancy of the arts That's true. in it and then we can get into the economics of it etc and people will come to Ghana tourism and etc things like music are of grand importance that's what they take with them. I mean, these have such an incredible impact, you know. Shatawale and Beyonce. So somebody is there and then Lion King, they are entering into Ghana. It's not even football, it's music. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, not enough. I mean, things that we still complain about um, that are basic, royalty system, all these things are not working. Yeah. So I wouldn't say we have done enough. Nowhere close. There are people working. You know, I we I just have to represent sort of not even as an artist who's been here for a while, but imagine if you're not even an artist who's been practicing and can come to CTFM, AJ or Halat, you say, Oh, can you come? And then you are somebody who's trying to make inroads. How will you even survive it long enough to be to continue? Like what is protecting them? Like what is protecting or encouraging or pushing them in terms of infrastructure or as you would say policy wise not much so imagine for more somebody coming up which is always a majority those who are making it or at least are making waves are fewer than those trying to make it mm. can you imagine that? that so we have to even look at it 
from that perspective as well. Do you receive your royalties? UCTF, have you paid me anything? <laughs> 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 but we, gr- we pay to a bigger body. I know, but maybe maybe we need to figure it out differently. I need to write a whole different deal with you guys so that <laughs> it comes straight to you. Hey, we should we should bypass so the I'll moment. go to every station and say, Charlie, 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 make we do on a contract. Let's look at the law. Let's look at how the law maybe supports this contract between us. But you know, I haven't received a single cent, not from Ghana. Other places, though, shout out to every other place that has, you know, ja- Germany. <laughs> yeah. So basically. Uh, Gamro is is you don't you don't get anything. You know, every time I talk about this is headlines, but then it's like and then people are like, Oh, but he's not registered and then I have to explain to them, you before that's not how it works. I'm registered with the ASCAP, it shouldn't matter. But you know what, at the end of the day we're not paying Jay Z and other people you play royalties, so I have to take it like that. Huh? <laughs> Okay, so uh, there are a lot of uh, fans who asked me to ask certain questions to you. Oh, okay. um, This one says, uh, I, I don't know if you're putting out a t-shirt about year of return because someone has to ask. No, ask no, no I want to put out a t-shirt. Actually, okay. you know, I, I wish I got if you listen. I'm going to holler at you. I hope you can do it for me soon. No, because okay. for me, I said, no, for me, it's the year of returns. Uh-huh. Ah, yeah, right. Yeah, so I want to do a t-shirt about the year of returns. Okay, I, yeah, I, I, I can. And I can. I've already copyrighted it, so <laughs> anybody who tries to steal it, we <laughs> Okay, I like that. Um, This one said to ask... Uh, well, well, okay, so when, a lot of people want to know when Gamble is actually going to be dropping. And I've been telling them for the past, whatever, that these days, I learned a lesson last year. Mm-hmm. Don't announce your dates. Okay. People do all sorts of mischievous things to try and sit on the happiness of your releases when you announce your dates. Okay. It's true. It's a competitive industry. People, people are funny. I can tell you that last year, every time I release, sometimes when I tele, tele, telegraph it, other things were happening around there, and I don't think it was by coincidence. Which artist? What, what? It doesn't matter who, but they are—they are watching. Yeah, no, 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 no. If we see for a junk faculty, you be a. So, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think sometimes just keep it to your chest a bit. So we we'll just wake up one morning, I'll be out. I mean, there's a rollout happening. We put out a single. Okay. So we know that there is a rollout happening, right? So, and we're trying to use that to build anticipation and to build interest and and yeah i know for sure that there'll be something else happening <laughs> and it will drop it will drop okay. it will drop it will drop it will drop okay someone says ask m dot when he's dropping tomorrow is it tomorrow uh, tomorrow is not dropping tomorrow uh-huh. and if it was dropping tomorrow i won't tell you today <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just make up one day tomorrow will be out mm, hashtag tomorrow okay. it, me and my big mouth yesterday i started talking about tomorrow but it's the name of a song it's, 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 it's the name of a very powerful song on the okay. game which kind of artists will be featured on the gamble <laughs> just a few just a, we, we, okay we know we know Simi's on it yes yeah, Simi's uh, on it who else is on it um you know what just ah, one just man. one just one just one person <sighs> just one person okay you know I'm going to say it you know yeah. Okay, I'll give one name of somebody in the UK. Moe logo is going to be on it, definitely. Okay. He's, he's okay, amazing. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, he's Th- definitely on it. All right. That, okay. Thank, thank you for that. Um, someone wants to know when are you getting married, or if he's already married. Is it the woman or a man asking? Uh, a man, to, actually. I want to measure my reactions. A man. Do fear some. <laughs> you can't even marry me. So why are you concerned about how, when I will... Okay, I'll, me as a woman, I'm asking. When okay. Are, huh. when? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk. Uh-huh. So is there a special woman on the horizon? Is there a special woman that is going to be... So uh, special, so special. Listen yeah. to the gamble and you hear it all. Hey. Yeah, so the gamble is definitely very vulnerable in my per- about my personal life. So Big Mad is inspired by your life. Of course. So you were cheating. No, I was making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is implied in the song. Yeah, men are okay. trash, man. Oh, wow. Even those of us who try to be <laughs> all progressive. Okay. We falter. We slip uh-huh. and fall, and sometimes we land on somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> you slip and fell into her. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, wow, I mean, that was graphic. 
<laughs> I tried to make it metaphorical, but you went very good. I, I, I can't help myself. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm trying, you know, I think maybe the gamble is going to help me start being accountable because when you start talking about these things and you say it out loud and you say it to somebody, you found a rubber on my pants, at least I was being safe and you're like, yeah. What kind of F boy behavior is like, this? You know what I mean? So sometimes the beginning of accountability is being vulnerable and saying the stuff. I'm not friendly and I understand Drake because sometimes Drake used to say some things. I'm like, ah, which kind of man says it? <laughs> Have that blah blah that you love so much. I'm just saying you can do better. I'm like, what kind of hater is that? <laughs> but you know what? He was probably drinking, he was vulnerable, and he was just saying it first. And then maybe after he was accountable. So oh, yeah. the gamble is moving in that direction. Okay. So we'll be hearing a lot of true life inspired events. Yeah, and not being afraid to say that, to say things that don't make me look good okay. but they are truthful but i help other people relate to it and say that you know what i feel good about this not because it's a pleasant story all the time but it's because it's a real story i know that i'm not the only one hmm. so that's 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 an approach that uh i've taken that approach but i think because of how we've me the music has been marketed people have been just so much more uh, caught up with the singles that when I try to paint a complete picture, you know, Cupid's Crooked or other things, it's not always been seen. So they, the strong, the strongest versions of manifest they get are the ones in which I'm either beating my chest or really talking about something like some wavy or other things of sorts or no shortcuts, these bigger ideas and get yeah. into the nuances. But the vulnerable manifest has always been there. But I think more or less when you start putting songs out like Big Mad, well, many why and others as well you, you start leading people into that kind of more of that vulnerability and it, and it's strange because when you write these songs that's not your intention right and afterwards when you start listening you are even like hey Charlie, these people they're going to side eye me <laughs> but you. you you enjoy it for the fact that that comes with growth of a human being hmm. you know pretending 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 or at least putting a shield all the time I don't think it's even healthy for, for you as an individual. Yeah. Nor is it healthy for growth in your audience. You are going to lose people at the point because you sound repetitive. True. Which you man were here before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one just coming in um, says, Ni from Nyamiche says, please ask uh, Manifest why there's a dot after the M and also his top five rappers in Ghana as well. The dot, I've always explained it to people. I kind of stumbled upon the name and it was... It was trying to separate one part the end part from the rest of it mm -hmm. and it looked cool the funny thing about it is now it's not even absurd anymore look at how people spell their names they use v's for use i mean who who, who, who in ghana cry spells their name interesting now uh, okay yeah radical yeah. the kid <laughs> drum roll um but which of the spacely has a, a dollar sign so I'm, 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 you know, shout outs to all the people because now they don't make me seem like a stick out like a sore thumb with my dot dot dot. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So my top five rappers. This question detained me more than anything. Okay, well there are two questions that detained me. This is one of the questions. And what's the second one? I don't even say it because <laughs> <laughs> this question detained me because I don't think, I don't think I should, I should be that interested in that as one of the people in the conversation. Yeah. You know, and also I don't think I should sit here and start telling you top five people I either like or are my friends. Mm. If I want to do something like that, I need to give you a nice criteria and give you an objective something. And a lot of times people don't do that. They sit sure. on radio and they tell you they are friends. They know sure. that this person is better than the three of the four people. They're not better than us. And obviously, art is subjective, but maybe more skilled or more in impactful, etc. It's because they're friends. So the reason this question time is I don't want to do that same thing. Yeah. And if we want to have a whole panel discussion, we'll call DJ Black. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um so still on the issue of the industry. Um do you think it's progressed? You've been in the industry for for quite a while. You've seen a whole progression. You're calling me old? <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, you don't know, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> My comedic no, self is going Yeah, but, but how do you think progression has been? Uh, it, it started off from 
uh, from the point that you have been in, uh, do you think the industry is progressing in a way that allows for more creativity to be in the in the industry? Is the the kind of music that being put out off a standard that is acceptable worldwide, or are we just still figuring it out? Well, I'll begin here, which is. When I have conversations with people like Ibrahim Mohenejan and other people who have been around for a while since, I would say, since the the beginnings of this new wave. The oh. beginnings of this new wave, we can say, is like the beginning of hip life. Sure. So somewhere in the 90s. They will give you perspective that will make you know that, yes, there's been growth. It's definitely not stagnant in that regard. Uh, also, technology has afforded us a lot of possibility. Oh, absolutely. Number one. No artist is going to ask anybody permission to record anymore. They can they can record in their bedroom. They can do all sorts of things. Technology has made it possible not to need all these big producers and all that. When I say producers, I don't mean music producers as in the ones making the beats and extra. I mean former music producers as the ones you go to who say, "Okay, I have money. I'll let I'll pay for a studio, go and record, etc." You know, Paimuka is twenty now. If for Buffalo and Hammer probably tell you about the creation of that it required a producer or other people who would you know put in so that has changed so that this uh, this allows somebody randomly somewhere in takwa shout out to you such <laughs> or somewhere else to to be able to create and put it out that doesn't guarantee that it will just work people also think that just putting out good or great music is going to make it work no so now we've reached a point where yes in, in creatively we're able to create plenty plenty we can create today, mix, master, and put it out. We have the ability. Technology has revolutionized how this, the from creation to the selling of product, how it works. But then we come to the other parts where we are lacking. If you look, at, if you think about it, we we might, in in some aspects, we've gone backwards. The Amati the days, Lumbas, Kujinichi, they might have been with a despite. Other people who might have put money and etc. to market right. it after they created or. We don't we don't have that. Yeah. We barely. A lot of people are building their teams as labels, myself included. And then over time hopefully you're able to get the right pieces and the right people and then one or two partnerships to make it happen. But a lot of artists find it difficult because an artist when he wakes up or when he's growing up, that's not what they are thinking that this is involved. They think their their life is going to be I'm gonna come up with ideas. I record songs, I put them up, they'll love it, I'll do shows, game finito. Yeah. No, <laughs> there's so many aspects of it. Then now that is required to move from unknown to known, from to move from known to successful. Yeah. So there's been progress in some respect, but the rate at which the world is moving. Look at this. O C B C was charting in the world. None of us chart in the world. That's true. So there are, there's growth, but there are certain things in which now we are lacking because everything is going so fast. There's a streaming world, and because it's a streaming world, Spotify is barely here. How many people even have the card to go and pay for iTunes, Spotify, Boom Play? Well, Boom Play they can. I think they can even use more money. I think I believe, right? So yeah, they've been doing that. So so we are also lacking there. As opposed to when it was cassettes, it could be anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Cantamato, etc. <laughs> so the monetization and 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 the and the business infrastructure of it is not. Catch, it's not keeping up with the world as fast, but that there also brings up opportunity and possibility. I think a lot of people are looking to Africa as the wave, not because it's just the music, but because there's so much untapped business potential. Okay, now uh, hey, that was a long answer, I Papa. Know. Jesus Christ, <laughs> I mean, it's quite um, that day. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm really enjoying the conversation so much. I couldn't even do checklists, and I, I think we're gonna have to do that at some point in time soon. But mm-hmm. uh, as uh, someone who wields quite a lot of power um not only in the online community uh with a huge fan base not only in the creative industry as well but you're a public figure a, a figure that that can whose words go far and wide do you feel the need or have you do you feel comfortable commenting on social issues do you feel you have a responsibility to comment on social issues or, or do you feel certain areas could end up sidelining some of your fans no, I've always felt comfortable because I'm even able to do it in the music first and foremost, sure. which is important. I think where I, I, I have changed 
or where I'm different now is that I don't want to be a Twitter warrior or to mm. be any of these. I think it's important that I choose my mediums and when to communicate or when to support etc. Else I'll become like I'll become I, I might actually uh, what do you call it what's the word diminish the influence and importance because I might seem like one of those people who's cloud chases yeah. and uses issues to cloud chase and I'm not interested in that but everybody and their style my style I think is number one first of all be able to use the music number two be able to use key moments when I'm sitting here with you and we're we're engaging in this kind of thing I think is a great forum to be doing that mm. I can't be on Twitter on a soapbox or editorializing every day I don't even have the time for it sure understand so i think it's the ca- that careful balance is you know but sometimes too is also important no matter what show i'm in or hibernation for me to if my friends and everybody are to, maybe that is the only form mm. to be able to maybe make a quick video and put it on instagram sometimes rarely though mm. i think timing and all that you know and potentially i think this is why i admire the places where people like the kendrick lamas are because you're never looking to hear anything from his Twitter or his Instagram. But you know from the music he's, he speaks on things. You know from if there's a major interview on Billboard or whatever, there's this there's clarity and not being afraid to to have to take positions on social issues, etc. Yeah. But there isn't we are not we're not ambulance chasers. We are not also we're not preachers. We're not different things. So I can, for me at least you know there are some people who are better at it there are some people who, are, who know where their balance is I'm not one of those people mm-hmm. I'm very clear about where I stand with things and I do believe I need to support the things that I believe in but you are not going to find me on every single trigger or provocation I like going that. on to I like media. that I like that I like that oh, time flies when you're having so much fun like the way I'm enjoying mm-hmm. this conversation uh, but on to lighter uh, issues uh, music specifically so Big Mad is out I am enjoying it like mm-hmm. I think everyone else is loving it as well I think he's giving some some cheaters and ability you know yeah, yeah, yeah you know I mean, they're giving them some lyrics but yeah, you know but it. I think the women like it more too because they can like mm-hmm, I see you <laughs> you foolish 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 <laughs> man yeah. but okay so this is out um, we can expect some more coming out over the next couple of weeks I will hope definitely uh, definitely and then wrapping up the year with Manifestivities. December 22nd. Really exciting. But uh, which song has been the... E- okay, so I'll, which song has been the easiest to create on the new album? I don't know hmm. if you can give me a title. Just the title and maybe the feel that went into creating all this. Okay, T- two of them were the easiest to make. Big Mad and the song called Idea For You. Okay. Idea For You was the last one I did. And um, at some point, I get into a zone where I don't write. Usually, it's a combination of both us. And like sometimes, you might have some ideas. You just go in the booth, do it, and then you spend time writing. But I did for you as in one of those times when I, I just go and do two bars, four bars, four bars. And I finish very quickly because there's an energy flow in me. Almost like how I did the Burner feature on another story. Yes, doing, how doing, was doing that? Right um, no, that was... That was vibes. It's pure vibes. You don't have to overthink it. You just do it. And you don't even have to discuss it. Mm. It's beautiful to be around very inspired and talented people who are also like-minded in some regard. So you don't have to be over-explaining or explaining anything. Can we expect a feature with him on the gamble? Wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I was trying to slide that in there. I thought I was being slick. I was like, yeah, you know. And then, like, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, uh, so, so we should wait and see. Wait and see. Okay, okay, okay. Wait and see. But which one was the most difficult to put out on the gamble? What do you mean difficult? Creative process was harder. Uh, maybe uh, mind blocks. Maybe... Uh, not the writing didn't come as easily or maybe the creative process was harder no none of them was hard in terms of creative process some i think i i can think of one that took longer to do not because it was difficult to do but we created and put an idea on it months before it was there and as i was as i conceptualized the gamble and i thought it was something i could pull from I pulled from it and then I just finished it. So it was something. It just it was an idea that had been put down. And it was sitting there. 
So maybe it's but difficult now. If it, if it's that difficult, then you probably know that I didn't include pack it because music is not a thing you force. You can't force music. If you you can, but it's not going to work. True. The results are almost dire and the black hole of black holes <laughs> when you force music. You can't force it. Yeah. Is the the way it comes from you naturally and spiritually is the way in which people are going to receive it that way. Okay. If you force it, it becomes like a lecture. We all know how how many students remember their lectures yeah, after sure. they go home. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Now before I let you go, uh like a minute more, can we expect the song in the future anytime soon? He's he's called for it. Yeah, no, I gave him the verse already, so yeah, ah, so ish. you should go and ask him. Ish. Mm. Okay, so we should be expecting. So medium, that. I've done my part. I'll, yeah. Ish, yeah. Ish. Okay. Mm. Now, thank you so much, Manifest. It's it's times up. Uh, we need, we will definitely do this again. Uh, before, yeah. Before we wrap wow, up. Wow, time uh, time. I know. When you have a fun. Sorry, guys, if I didn't answer your questions, but don't worry. I might go and do an Ask Manifest this week. Oh, on, okay. On, then on, I'll, on I'll, I'll throw all the questions that were <laughs> sent to me your way. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, thanks so much for passing through Manifest. And I'm going to end it with Big Mad. Yes, yes please yes, do. Yes, yes, okay. Please do. And, and every other DJ on City, make sure that you play Big Mad like five times today at least. Yes, sir. Because I've come here in person. <laughs> yes. Please honor me small. <laughs> Blackmailer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll do. Thank yeah, you so much for passing you. through Manifest. Right, Always yes. a pleasure. So as a man, very shortly going into the City Prime News at midday. So enjoy the new one, Manifest, featuring Simi Big Mad. Oh.